Welcome to the Trinity Reformed Church Podcast. Exhortation by Larson Hicks on February 14th, Lord's Day Service. Our exhortation this morning comes from Proverbs chapter 11, verse 9, and also verses 12 and 13. With his mouth, the godless man would destroy his neighbor, but by knowledge, the righteous are delivered. Whoever belittles his neighbor lacks sense, but a man of understanding remains silent. Whoever goes about slandering reveals secrets, but he who is trustworthy in spirit keeps a thing covered. The Proverbs are are chocked full of warnings about the lips, Um, and it's because our big mouths can really get us in a lot of trouble. James compares the tongue to the utter of or the rudder rather of a ship, um, and it's a great analogy because a rudder steers and directs a ship, and and it's just this small little piece of of wood or metal on an otherwise you know, large ship. Um, the uh, if the rudder's broken, the ship is hopeless and will eventually wreck. My turn on. Are we good? The comparison is excellent because a man or woman who has not learned how to control their mouth can rip their home apart. They can alienate themselves from their friends or even make themselves or their spouse unemployable. Careless words are not a mere trifle. We don't get to erase the harm of our words, the harm that our words create, by just saying, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to say that, I was angry. The saying actually should be changed to something like, sticks and stones only break bones, but words really are deadly. There are so many ways we can sin with our mouths. Lies, slander, backbiting, insults, hasty promises, gossip, spreading old wives' tales, or as Matt called them last week, conspiracy theories, being rude, ungracious, unloving, contentious, inconsiderate, harsh, fake news. I could go on and on. This morning, we're just going to focus on one kind of sin of the tongue, but the truth is, we really could, if, we, if every exhortation from here through the rest of the year was on, the, on sins of the tongue, we would just scratch the surface. Chapter 11, again, of Proverbs, verses, verse 12, it says, it refers to belittling your neighbor, and in 13, it refers to going about slandering. The warning that prefaces these two sins in verse 9 is that the mouth of the godless destroys his neighbor. So there you are, talking to your friend, and they mention a family that you go to church with, or one of your neighbors, or something like that, and they say, oh, I heard the Jones family is just so, I mean, they're just so obsessed with sports, right? I mean, it's just ridiculous. The temptation in the moment, right, is to is because we tend to be man-pleasers instead of God-fearers and instead of neighbor-lovers, the temptation is to, is to agree and to kind of fuel the fire. Oh, yeah, the Joneses, yeah, they're, I mean, they they really push those kids hard. I mean, don't you think maybe, I mean, those kids are someday probably going to grow to resent them. The truth is, to you, really, the Joneses' sports habits have never really been a thing that you've been concerned about or worried about. But in some twisted, sinful impulse to impress someone, you and to make them like you more, maybe, you go ahead and agree, and you even double down on, on the trash talking. This is what godless men do, according to the Proverbs. They destroy their neighbor with their mouths. But there's a reason why the Proverbs say that he who belittles his neighbor lacks sense. Doing this is stupid. There's so little gain in slandering your neighbor, and there's so much to lose. Where will that gossiping friend be when your heater goes out in the dead of winter? Or God forbid you have an intruder. Who's going to show up when you move into a new home, uh, and who's going to bring you food when you're sick or recovering from surgery? It's not going to be your stupid gossiping friend. It's going to be your neighbor or your fellow church friends. So your church mates are quirky. They have odd habits, maybe a short temper. Maybe they make an inappropriate joke every now and then. Maybe their media standards aren't as high as yours, or they're obsessed with some medical or some political fad that you think is silly or just dead wrong. The proverb says, a man of understanding remains silent. Keep it to yourself. If you belittle your neighbor, you lack sense. There are two, there are two other people that Solomon refer, talks about lacking sense in the Proverbs. 
he who commits adultery, and those who take joy in folly. One translation renders it, stupidity is the delight of the senseless. So if you're not a senseless fool, you'll keep your mouth shut next time you have the opportunity to trash your neighbor. The proverb says that whoever goes about slandering reveals secrets, but he who is trustworthy in spirit keeps a thing covered. Covering faults is a good thing. God didn't put your neighbors in your lives so that you can identify their faults and warn the rest of the world about them. God calls us to love our neighbors. And and covering sin, in fact, is the business that our Savior is in. So let's hear it again. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 9 and 12 and 13. With his mouth, the godless man would destroy his neighbor, but by knowledge, the righteous are delivered. Whoever belittles his neighbor lacks sense, but a man of understanding remains silent. Whoever goes about revealing, slandering, reveals secrets, but he who is trustworthy in spirit keeps a thing covered. Thanks for listening. If you want to find out more, check out our website at trinityreformedkirk.com. That's trinityreformedkirk.com. Oh,